Please welcome Hannah Burner. I mean, look at this is amazing. I this is your so daily show. I tried to match the energy. Yeah. Um. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, con congrats on your special. Thank you. It's doing great. It's very funny. I feel like bachelorettes, it's unfair to compare them to cults because cults give you the sweet escape of death. <laughs> I mean, I'm well versed in a lot of cults. They're sister wives. Sometimes it's just running around naked. It depends right, on right, the cult, Michael. Right. <laughs> Some are better than others, and I would fall for one. I am one of those people you that would, fall, for would, would fall for a cult. fall for a cult? It's always a very compelling person, it seems to be, They're at the so front of They're so good at sales. Yeah. Like... <laughs> I mean, uh, so, naturally, you're a comedian, but was this drawn from some bachelorette experience? I... And there had to be some people that mad about this joke. They're... I hate to call myself out, but yeah. it was my bachelorette. Oh! <laughs> Yeah, oh, the audience made me feel really bad about that. <laughs> no, but I kind of felt this weird sense of power. Yeah. Like everyone was like, look, making sure I was okay, and I was yeah. like, with the in the wrong hands, this could go yeah. real wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I was able to be good, but it's just look, there's already a wage gap, and we're paying all this money for bachelorettes. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like the man came up with the bachelorette idea. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I, I remember when people were like, Michael, are you doing a bachelor party? And I'm like, I'm a stand-up comic who's on the road. Every, it's all a bachelor party. It's all a bachelor party. Um, you, you hit the road. You are stand-up comic. You've got a lot going on. But let's talk about being a woman in comedy, because it seems like a tough path. Do you want to become one? I become a woman in comedy. <laughs> uh, in a serious sense, you got to have some thick skin to do this. Yes. Yeah, I do think that people wonder why there's not more women in comedy. Yeah. But starting off and seeing that you have to go to these bars late yeah. at night, yeah. so many hilarious women are like, maybe there's other things I could do because this right. is kind of annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I do think that like having TikTok and having other avenues yeah. has helped me kind of be able to work on my material a lot yeah. without having to like deal with drunk people in bars yeah. too much. Or what about just the dudes in the green room judging all the time? And I say that as one of those dudes. <laughs> but there is a male... Do you want to tell them what happened? What, ha what did, what did what happen? Happened? <laughs> what happened? Well, you brought your dog, Walter, to the green room once. Holy shit. And I was trying to have, like, a safe, calm energy before my show. <laughs> and Walter just growled at me. <laughs> and I'm already dealing with all the comics giving me weird energy. This dog doesn't like me. Yeah. And I thought dogs could read good character. Yeah, well, maybe he can. So... <laughs> Walter is a dick, my dog. Uh, and you should follow Daily Show Dogs. There's a lot of pictures of him on there. But, you know, if you had him for the weekend, he would, he would snuggle up with you. I appreciate Although, that. Although, I noticed on your special, on the end, the very end, I watched it all the way through to the end, you thanked some people, one of which is your cat. Yes. Butters? Butters? Butter saved my life. Tell me Butter how. Did Tell me how. My therapy cat. Oh. Which is perfect, because it says, it says on here, how did your cat save your life? It doesn't say that. I've never heard that before. How did that happen? You know, I'm on the board of childless cat ladies. Okay. And... <laughs> <laughs> am I trying to run for something right yeah, now? What yeah, am I yeah. doing? <laughs> um, no, but I do feel like there's moments where a cat just being there for you, not judging yeah. you for all of your mistakes and regrets, yeah. she just loves you for you, and that yeah. was important in some hard times in my life. Yeah. Because, you know, comedy is a coping mechanism. I think yeah. having a really cute animal is also a coping mechanism. This whole business is people saying no to you, but when I come home, my dog says yes to me. <laughs> yeah. And that, that sounds like very sexual, what I just said. <laughs> I don't, didn't mean it to sound that way. Your, your special is not, it's, keep going, keep, keep going, Michael, keep going. Don't talk about f***ing your dog after bad sex. All comics should have a, a pet that loves them no matter what. Yeah. Because the audience doesn't always love you. No, it's true. Your special, I'm a man, 
and you say <laughs> you say at some point in your special like there's not a, there's not a lot of men here. Mm -hmm. You point you single out a guy. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I'm sure he loved that. <laughs> but you know, am I, was I as a man was I allowed to consume and watch I your special? I love. The, I feel like it's kind of like you know the reality TV shows that guys who are like I'm not into this stuff. Yeah. But then like <laughs> half an hour in, you see him in the kitchen, just like why'd she say that to her? Yeah, totally. Why'd she say that? Totally. So I feel totally. like this is a great special to watch with your guy. Yeah. And I feel like it's kind of the female locker room, like they it hear is. things or or girls are like, see, I'm not the only one yeah. who like during a qu can I say queef? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I feel like I like kind of just speaking out as a childless cat like community yeah, yeah. Um, and making guys kind of understand us a little more and like we like yeah. the comedy from a male perspective and I think it's great to have the female perspective too. I agree and it's yeah. <laughs> the the Daily Show has been on air for 29 years no one has ever said queef behind this desk. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to and it just came out. Um, <laughs> Which, that's in contradiction to what you said in the special, because in the special you said, I've never queefed by myself. You, um, you yeah. skinny dick, queefed me. Yes, yes. Yeah. I don't know right. if I used the term skinny dick. You just said that. Oh, shit. No, <laughs> I said you, needle dick. I said needle dick. You massive hog dick. <laughs> no, but I do think a lot of girls have been gaslit to believe that, like, they have a problem if they queef, yeah. and it's like, he queefed you. Yeah. And I got a lot of messages. I got yeah. a lot of messages from women being yeah. like, it happened tonight. And I felt no shame. And if that's what I bring to the world, that's what I brought. Yeah, I mean, that's like. <laughs> what a fun thing. No, I mean, <laughs> this audience apparently does a lot of queefing. <laughs> Big queef crowd. Speaking of queefs, um, there's no way to there's segue to There's no way to segue, segue to that. <laughs> I was going to say that we've played tennis together. We have. But that doesn't have to do with queefing. But grunting is a sound that our bodies make. Mm -hmm. Different location. Yeah, and grunting is just like laughing, which yep. we all love to do. And we might edit a lot of that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, but people don't know that when I first started comedy, okay. we hit tennis balls together. Yeah. And I yeah. remember being like, wow, this is a guy who played tennis who's a successful comedian. Maybe there's a chance that I could, you know, do well in this business. Yeah. And, Look, look where we are now. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I like how you're saying we. Uh, <laughs> the reason Walter growled at you is he saw the trajectory of your career. He was like, stop her now. No, I mean, you, you played at University of Wisconsin, Madison. Go Badgers. Go Badgers. Um, I mean, what, is this, oh. what does this evoke? What does that evoke for you? I'm upset. By the way, that's her. We didn't just pull like... <laughs> No, you know, I was in it, you know, yeah. waking up at 6 a.m., yeah. weights, tennis. Yeah, look at that. I, yeah, I, you know, I worked my butt off, yeah. and I do think that there was a moment when I didn't go pro yeah. where I was like, this was all for nothing. Yeah. I'm glad I wasted 15 years of my life. Yeah. And I really now, looking back, realize how tennis did prepare me yeah. for a lot of the adversity that I've dealt with with comedy and how with comedy, you're never, like, a real loser unless you like tell yourself you're a loser right because I could I could be like they liked it they yeah they were laughing with their nose like they <laughs> were tennis it's like you lost you yeah. suck so yeah. I've been much kinder to myself with comedy than yeah. I was with tennis yeah and I think you know dealing with pressure has been easier compared to like some of the things I dealt with with tennis why is the the junior tennis world? And excuse us, everybody. We're just going to talk about junior tennis it's for a second. Very niche. But this is very niche. It is. You're so true about being kinder to ourselves, and I think it's something we all can do all the time. Positive self talk. And I, and as a junior tennis player, heard you should be positive with yourself, but it wasn't happening. No. Is this? Is junior tennis? I mean, is it traumatic? Is it good? You said it prepared you. Yeah, because I'll joke with my dad. I'm like, I think you were too tough on me. He's like, well, you turned out okay, so right. I think I did good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> controversial. No, yeah. but I, I do think it's... Your joke about queefing was good. <laughs> <laughs> and you got tennis to thank for I that. I get my sense of humor from him. Yeah. But I do think when we were growing up... Um, I mean, you're a little older than me, but when we were growing up... <laughs> We weren't, people weren't aware of like the mental health as much. Yeah. And we knew that it was supposed to be hard and it yeah. was just whoever can push their, themselves harder. Yeah. And I didn't realize that you could have fun and be a winner. Mm. And I think with comedy, I've learned like you can laugh, have fun, yeah. and also succeed in ways. Yeah. And I think it's a cheat code to decide not to be mean to yourself 
Yeah. Um, and that was, took a long time for me to learn. Yeah. But it's like, with tennis, I loved it, but it didn't always bring me joy. Yeah. And I didn't realize that you can stop and find something that brings you joy that you'll also be good at, too. I love that. That's excellent. And that's great. Quit your jobs. Quit it. Quit your jobs. <laughs> find joy. Do drugs. Um, do you still follow tennis? You still follow? I'm, it's crazy. Yeah. I'm, like, newly back obsessed with tennis. Okay. I watch tennis all day. Yep. I'm training again. Yep. But like you're training. It's almost like therapeutic yeah. in my own way. Yeah. Like I take a lot of breaks. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> who of, of the pro players out there, men or women, who are you like can't take your eyes off of or are, who's resonating with Hannah? Shout out to some young Americans, Emma Navarro. Yep. Had She's a great season. Yeah. Extremely yep. talented. Yep. Jesse Pagula, Coco Goff, yep. Ben Shelton. Yep. Yep. <laughs> What is it that you look for in a pro? What is it that you look for? Like, I like fashion, mm. and then I like, I like backhand. Mm. I really want a player that has a badass backhand, mm -hmm. right? I like a player who's fearless. Ooh. I like a player who goes for things and does things that I never had yeah. chutzpah Correct. to do on my own. I love that. I want to see people, yeah, who seem like they have no fear. Yeah. Um, even though I know they're all scared, it's yeah. cool to see like they're not human. I love watching Ben Shelton. <laughs> ben Shelton will hit like 150 mile an hour second serve, and the way I used to hit second serve was like this: please go in, 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 please go in. Yeah. I mean, I think it's tennis is such a mental battle, so I love pe seeing people overcome their nerves and fears. Yeah. And and I also kind of love to see when they are human, like when Sabalenka lost her serve. Yeah. That was so human of her, yeah. and then she won a major after yeah. that. So I love seeing people deal with adversity, and I love comebacks. I love revenge. Honestly, yeah. sports is the best reality TV. Let's talk about last thing. You, you, you mentioned it. <laughs> revenge. Yeah. Revenge. I'm Sicilian. You're, okay, that, that's, that's oh, it. So I, that, that's all I needed to know. Okay. <laughs> no, but I mean, one of the things that endears, one of the things that, um, I really love about you is your work ethic. I mean, before the show, I see you doing Man on the Street in the city of New York. Afterwards, you're always like, you're oh, you, you got your podcast, you got your TikTok, you're crushing it. What is driving this? Is it some kind of revenge? I would say that's a glamorous, I would love to blame revenge, right. but like I'm running from my thoughts. Okay. When I'm sitting alone <laughs> for an hour, I start to be like, who is yeah. gonna die? And yeah. <laughs> I, or, I just, I love working. It makes me feel fulfilled. I love yeah. creating. But I also think revenge, like there's always gonna be people don't believe in you or people who try to take you down. And I think as a tennis player, we're very individual. Yeah. So I kind of have this story in my head where I'm like, I'm gonna take all that energy and help motivate me every day to like keep working, keep creating. I love it. Yeah. Hannah Burner, we, we ride at dawn. We're streaming on Netflix, Hannah Burner.